So I've got some scales for my knife made out of micarta that I'd really like to be able to fit on here, but they are not going to fit. My cutter is not incredibly difficult to make on your own at home. It uses fabric or paper as a strengthener for fiberglass resin. So to, for fabric, I used an old suit, a hand-me-down that doesn't fit anymore, so it's sacrificing itself, and I'm breaking it down to its component fabric pieces. Once I've got it into large sheets, I cut it into even rectangles, about 7 inches by 3 inches. The direct size isn't important as long as they're all basically a uniform shape and size within about a quarter inch of each side. We're going to be layering these within the fiberglass resin. So having them all uniform size will keep our final billet as evenly thick as possible. Just doing this was one pant leg provided me with a quite amount of these squares. I had enough to make two billets. Once all the fabric is cut, we start gathering stuff to do the fiberglass resin stage. I've got a couple of clamping blocks. These are just pieces of wood with cellophane packing tape on them. The slick side of the packing tape will not stick to the fiberglass resin, which is very nice. And very easy to make these kind of clamps. A lot of personal protective equipment is used with this fiberglass resin. It is very stinky. Uh, it will give you headaches. The fumes are very noxious, so I keep the garage door open, the fan on, and of course this is all the respirator and the gloves. The hardener is mixed in about 10 drops per ounce and stirred very thoroughly to get a nice amount of homogeneous resume. Once it's ready to go, we start dipping fabric strips in. I'm alternating fabric strips. One while will be dipped in and fully immersed and spread out all the excesses is relieved. And then a dry strip will be layered on and this will alternate wet and dry until I'm out of strips for each billet. The resin's very thick. It's about as thick as maple syrup. So it can actually be quite messy to work with. It, it does like to drip and stick. And trying to get it to soak into the fabric means that you are going to be getting it everywhere and, and dripping it everywhere. So that is a precaution to be aware of that it will make a mess. Putting a drop cloth down is probably a wise idea or a piece of cardboard, something to work on. Or I will show you in a minute how I get the pieces of fiberglass off of my, my work table. Once I'm satisfied with the amount of fiberglass within all the fabric, we're going to clamp them all down, apply a good amount of pressure. With as many clamps as I own, this pressure will make a very fine texture in the finished micarta. It almost comes out as a wood grain, and the more pressure you put on there and the finer the layers, the more fine the grain will appear to be. And we're going to let that cure for overnight, basically about 12 hours. After about an hour or so and the resin starts to harden up a little bit on the table, I just go with a sharp chisel and just slide it right off. The next morning we unclamp and this process is a little hairy because you want to make sure that when you release the molds that you're releasing just the molds and nothing else. And this came with very little fight. I just used a flat end screwdriver to pry up where I could get underneath it. And that's basically what they look like when they come right out. Not very pretty, but we're going to make it so. And very hard. Use the table saw to clean up the edges. The first edge is, is the more difficult one to square up. And once I have a square edge, I can use the fence. Now this part is another part where you want to be wearing the dust mask because those little fiberglass bits get everywhere and they do not bode well for your respiratory system. Using the miter gauge, now we have two nice square billets. And from here, it's a pretty straightforward process of just tracing the outline of our knife right onto the billet. All I'm using is a scratch awl or a scribe. We're not going to cut exactly along those lines, but we will cut close, making the lines basically ensure that you cut a piece large enough, but we'll grind them down to fit once everything's said and done, all the pins are lined up and all the epoxy's in place. 
The combination of hacksaw and coping saw works really well. This cuts better even than wood. You don't have, though there is a grain, you don't have to actually worry about following the grain. It's just a, a, more for appearance than anything. I would use a bandsaw if I had a working one at the moment, but I do not. The pinholes, this part is not difficult at all. As you can see, I used one of my dead drill bits to center on the quarter inch hole in the knife. And then three easy holes on the drill press. At any stage of this process, when I'm cutting or manipulating the fiberglass, I'm, I'm wearing a respirator because the dust and the shavings are not something you want to be breathing a lot of. Once I got everything more or less lined up and on the pinholes in place, this is the epoxy part. We're solidifying the pins and the uh, micarta to the knife. And this is a pretty basic five minute epoxy. If I was not using pins, I would probably use something a little bit stronger or, or another way of helping solidify the epoxy, but these pins are a very tight fit. And the epoxy is, in my experience, proven to be quite strong. So it, it's a situation that works out pretty well. As you can see, the pins are a very tight fit, and the last pin here is actually a piece of tubing that is a quarter inch round. It will give me in the finished product a lanyard hole. Once again, it's clamped up, and we leave it clamped up for several hours. Even though it's a five minute epoxy, it takes several hours to fully cure out and harden. Which brings us to this stage, which is basically I'm just chewing up the micarta to the metal of the knife. You can see the metal's just barely starting to show through there. This is a process that takes a little bit of time, but the micarta works very quickly. It doesn't, doesn't put up hardly any resistance. As you can see the amount of dust created in this process, I am absolutely wearing a mask and using ventilation. <laughs> Changing my clothing frequently because it is getting very ruined. Now that all the pins, the sides are all evened up, we will shape the handle and finish the knife.